Last season, our chairman said we should spend our entire transfer budget during the summer at the beginning of season 10. We've spent 67 million pounds, we've still got 30 odd left in the bank. It's a big year for the boom. Hello and welcome back to Rupal Boom or Bust. It is the start of season 10 and if you're enjoying these videos do please remember to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed do consider subscribing. It does help me out massively when it comes to basically getting these videos into other people's feeds that might not know exactly who I am. Anyway, season 10 starts today. We've got transfers and we've got some Champions League games. First off, let's talk about the players leaving the club. Alessio Piazza is the first one to leave. Now, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to get rid of Piazza. He's been here quite a long time. 87 appearances in the league, 21 goals. But when you get £5.5 .5 million from him, you kind of feel like you have to sell him. So Piazza has moved on, but don't worry, he has been replaced. And he has been replaced by the player we had on loan last season, Matteo Sannino. At the end of season 9, we offered him a contract and he has signed that deal. 2.9 potentially going up to £3.3 .3 million for a player who got 7 goals and 9 assists last season. That's not bad. That's a pretty good deal. 22 years old as well, so still plenty of time for him to get better hopefully as well. Sannino is a permanent signing. For £3 million, we have signed ourselves a third choice goalkeeper. Lidinho is 19 years old and from Brazil. He looks bloody good, doesn't he? He just looks really good. He's six foot three. He's got loads of green. I say loads. He's got three green numbers in aerial reach, one on ones, and reflexes. I think he's good. Lidinho, five star potential as well. He will be our third choice keeper. I might try and loan him out maybe for a season or two. He is third choice because we've sold Davies Mwepu to Dijon for 450k. Moving up in terms of value then, £4 million next for 21-year-old Spanish central midfielder, right winger, attacking midfielder and striker, Justice Obot, who I think is actually part Nigerian if I remember correctly. He is, yes, he's part Nigerian. He has been signed for £4 million. I think he's good. He's probably not going to be one of the first names on the team sheet, but when you look at actual just good attributes, technique, passing, first touch, composure, flair, stamina, he's, a, he's pretty good. He's pretty bad at tackling and marking and taking penalties and corners and crossing and things like that, but we don't need him to do that. We've also gone and bought ourselves a Belgian striker who I tried to sign a very long time ago when he left Westerlo and went to PSG. Mats Lehmans has joined on a permanent deal and I think he is very, very good. Three star as an advanced forward, four star potential, only 22 years old. He is fast, 18 acceleration, 14 pace, not the best, but... His 18 acceleration is just absolutely insane. 14 finishing as well on there. Composure of 17. I'm expecting goals from Mats Lehmans. He has joined for quite a steep fee, £7.5 million. But he's probably going to be getting more game time over Georgiev this season. Last season, I said Georgiev might be getting replaced. Lehmans is that replacement. There's a big smile on my face because this is my favourite signing. Antonio Duvignac, 16 years old. Croatian midfielder, we'll call him. He can play anywhere in the middle. He can also play as a right winger. I'm training him up to be a left winger because he's only 16 years old and he should be able to do that without too much hassle. He has signed from our feeder club, Rijeka. He is £14 million, potentially going up to £17 million. It's steep. I know it's steep. He is technically our record transfer at this point. There's still more to come, but Duvignac, I think, is going to be world class. He's good enough to play for us now, and he's only 16 years old. Our second most expensive player ever is Stavros Nikolaou. £18 million we have spent on an English and Swiss central defender. He has basically, he's never played in England. I don't know how he's English, but yeah, he's apparently he's English. He's got nine under 21 caps. I think he's bloody good, isn't he? Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential, only 20 years old. Stavros Nikolaou is going to be playing alongside uh, Mohamed in uh, what uh, Mohamed Solomon? That's it. I only said Mohamed Salisu. He's not. We're not saints. He's going to be playing alongside Solomon as our main two central defenders for the season. But yes, Nicolau and Solomon. I think those are two rocks at the back. And the big one, the big transfer, twenty million pounds. Lucielio Cabral has signed from Juve or Zebra. If you're a football manager and you don't have the uh, the fix. He's just ridiculous, isn't he? For £20 million, he was worth nearly 50 When we When we bought him, he was worth nearly £50 million. We've got him for 20 A lot of these deals as well are over sort of certain amount of years, like three years basically. So we've not paid all of this in one lump. 
which does mean we still have 30 odd million pounds left to spend, Cabral is going to be arguably our best player on the pitch. Hopefully, he's going to do much better than Radakovic in the middle. We're still not quite done. We've also loaned in Marcus Edwards. He's now 30 years old, but we kind of needed some other options on the wings. Edwards is good enough, and we don't really have to pay a huge amount. We're paying his wages, and that's it. So I think we've got a good deal here. He's in as a squad player. He's not going to play every game, but he's also versatile. We can play on the left or the right, and I think he should be good enough to do both. So I think that's a good deal for us. There is also a lot of other transfer business to talk about. Talby, Perez, Gildo, Mwepu, Bernard, Martin, Thomas, De Grief, and this guy, El Jumari, whatever his name is, El Jumani, have all left the club for various fees. Talby going to Circle Bruce for 1.4 million is actually pretty big. Perez to Birmingham, which is a weird signing for me, but that's happened. Also, loan deals galore. Rosenkovic to Better Jerusalem, Butakrit to PSV, Eindhoven, Keating has gone to Bristol City. Nguyen Trong Dat to Basel, Celson Barros to Le Mans, Sepulveda to Colo Colo, a whole bunch of other players going various places. Kim Valentin, big one there, going to Hanover. If he gets game time there, that is going to be great. We've also got, who else is a big one? There was another big one, I think, if I remember correctly. Maybe not, but you can see lots and lots of players going out on loan. That's going to hopefully get them better. I've got high hopes for a lot of these people. We've also signed, um, I completely ignored it, uh, Fulgencio. Uh, he left the club. Didn't get a club, we brought him back. So yeah, he's back here and now he's on loan at Major Honda. Major Honda, those guys. We're not fully done with transfers just yet. However, I'm not actively looking anymore. If somebody comes in on my scout reports and say, you really should buy this guy, I'm going to do it because if he's good, then I'm going to do it. But also, uh, Gnehi and Gasberg might be going out on loan. This man who came through our youth team, I, I don't, don't really have too much to do about this. He's just off to Lille apparently. We also have ourselves, I think, a player from Myanmar and America, Y Thane, joining in January. I'm looking forward to him because he's actually really good. Right, we're almost at our first match of the season. It's going to be Zurich. We're going to be playing the home and away legs in this one, hopefully getting into the Champions League group stages. We've already played a league game as well against Lommel. We win 3-0. Lehmans, San Nino and a penalty from Arcus Edwards in this one. We're third currently. Doesn't matter. Let's play Zurich. The starting lineup then for our Champions League start is going to be a Costa in goal. Jose Luis, Nicolau Solomon and Richard Gonzalez at the back. The Gonzalez as a right winger experiment. I've binned it off. He's, he's a left back now. Lucielio, Cabral and Charlie Patino will be in the middle of the pitch with Montero and San Nino on the wings. Bakayoko and Lehmann's up front. The bench, Felipe, Sio, Radakovic, Georgiev, Christensen, Edwards and Faye. We have a good squad now. We genuinely have a really good squad with depth. I think that's the thing we've been lacking the last couple of seasons. We haven't had the depth. Now if we get an injured central defender, we've got Sio on the bench. He can come on. We've got Christensen, who, by the way, he's getting pretty good. So Christensen can also come off the bench. We've got Radakovic as a central midfielder who we can bring on. We've got Georgiev and Faye as strikers. We've got Edwards who can play on either wing. We've got La Rossa. Some of these players down here don't even have squad numbers because they haven't been in the squad yet. We've also got Duvignac. I should probably put him on the bench. We're going to put Duvignac on the bench for Faye, you know? I love the fact that Duvignac is 16 years old, and we're going to play him as much as possible. So, apparently, we are favourites. We are favourites for this match, so hopefully we do the job. We just beat Zurich. I think Zurich, they're Swiss, aren't they, if I remember correctly? They're a Swiss side. They're not a terrible side, but we are better. Apparently, we're a better side, so hopefully we can just walk over them. We can just dominate them, maybe beat them 2 or 3 nil at home, beat them 1 nil away, nice and easy into the next round. In order to do that, we do need some highlights. Here we go. San Nino on the left-hand side. Right-footed cross. Back post, it's cleared. Louise is going to keep that in play. Just about plays it all the way back to Stavros Nicolau. Charlie Patino. Solomon's there with him. He's gone off to the left to San Nino once again. To Bakayoko. To Lehmans. Plays it back to Cabral. Finds Richard Gonzalez with some space in the fullback. Might go for goal. He does. It's not very good. It's wide. So our first chance on goal goes to our left back, which it's not awful because he's actually pretty good going forward, but you'd rather it fall to somebody like a Lehmann's or a Bakayoko. It is Zurich with the ball. Sergei to Fry in the middle. Number 17's there with him. I'm not sure if that's Charlie Patino. He's lost his number. He's lost his squad number. I think he was number seven last season, wasn't he? In the middle was Lorenzo. Through ball was intercepted by Solomon with ease. Didier Montero to Nicolau. Luis on the right. Montero's got some space if he wants to use him. Luis is going to go himself, though, down the right-hand side. Get that ball in the middle. Stick it on Bakayoko's head. Luis gets tackled. Keep it in play. Does. Gets it back. 
Number seven wants Cabral outside the area. Lovely little touch there. Montero facing away from goal. There's a shot here, and it's Matteo San Nino on the end of it. It's 1-0, 22 and a half minutes on the clock. We are 1-0 in front. Let's get two more. That was a very long highlight, wasn't it? That was a really long highlight. And now Zurich possibly have themselves a chance to come forward. Caceres to Sergei, all the way back to the keeper. Steal it, steal it, Lehmans. He's not going to. It's upfield. Gonzalez chests that down. Solomon, who's picked up an early yellow card, which is a bit annoying. My central defenders always seem to get booked. San Nino, the goal scorer, is going to run off towards the right-hand side. He's gone for a shot? Question mark? Almost at half time. Very little has happened in this game at the moment. Cabral wins the head. San Nino back to Gonzalez, who's now picked up a yellow card of his own. Charlie Patino back to Gonzalez again. He's going to run straight into space. Nope, back to Charlie Patino. Long ball off to that left hand side. Bakayoko is going to hopefully keep this in play. San Nino. He's got an option behind him. Patino needs to find somebody. Cabral's there. First time shot from Cabral. And Lucielio Cabral makes it 2-0 with his first ever goal for Rupal Boom. £20 million that goal's cost. Let's hope that he gets a few more this season. That Cabral effort then means it is 2-0 at half time. We're looking good, aren't we? We're looking very good. I just said we're capable of better. Fair enough. We are capable of better. Let's get some more goals. Caceres with a free kick, six and a half minutes into the second half. Galdino, Salifu, Lorenzo, back to Salifu. He's gone for a shot. It's rattled into a somebody else. I'm not even sure who it hit. Was it one of our players? Lorenzo to Vasic, plays it back to Salifu. Galdino, Salifu again. We need to steal this here. Cabral with a slide. Doesn't manage to really win the ball, though. Vasic gets lucky. Lorenzo, this is... I think Zurich are looking pretty good here, aren't they? Salifu to Gardino. These two are just passing... Like, there's three players who are just passing between them, all of them. They're in on goal here. Acosta with a very good save. And that's going to be a goal kick because they ran it off the pitch. Lovely. Zurich once again coming forward. Lorenzo with it. Who I think he's just picked up a yellow card, maybe? Or maybe I just didn't notice. Of course, it's Galdino. Is he going to go forward to Salifu? He's gone to Lorenzo. Salifu's there on the left. It's, it's annoying when you start to learn the opposition players when most of them are regens. Like, you shouldn't know this. I've never played Zurich before. We shouldn't know half their players, but they've passed it around so well. We've seen all of their names. Lehmann's there. Lehmann's with an absolute rocket while I was just talking nonsense about the Zurich players. It is 3-0. 57 minutes on the clock. We are cruising into the second leg for this one. Right, on the hour mark, we're going to do a change. San Nino, even though he's playing really well, we are going to bring him off for Marcus Edwards because basically, no, we're not. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Duvignac, here we go. On you get, buddy. Left-hand side. Make an impact on your first ever Champions League appearance. I, I definitely am training him up to be a left winger, right? That's def No, box to box. Don't, don't do that, Stuart. Edwards it is. Duvignac is still going to come on for Patino, and then we're just going to swap you two round because Cabral really should be playing as the DLP, shouldn't he? He really should be the DLP. So, we've got Edwards, we've got Duvignac. I want to see Duvignac getting involved, getting in the mix a little bit. 20 minutes left, Gonzalez throw, Marcus Edwards, Cabral, tries to get some space for himself instead, I say for himself, he has got space for himself, he's just tucked that into the bottom corner, it's 4-0 against Zurich, we are looking like we're going through to the next round, I don't know whether the draw's taken place, I don't know if we know who we're playing the next knockout round, but we are effectively, we're through at this point, aren't we? No, this happened against Ajax last year, let's not say it again. Final 10 minutes, we're going to bring Georgiev on for Bakayoko. Let's give Lehmans and Georgiev time together to see whether they've got a little bit of a rapport. Bakayoko, so far this season, hasn't hit the ground running, has he? As you can see, Sanino, Cabral, Lehmans all getting on the score sheet. Bakayoko hasn't managed it yet. It is 4-0 in the home leg then. Second leg off to Switzerland. Let's just not concede. That'll be nice. We've also got a game in the middle. I have just seen that that game in the middle is against Ghent. We might play the Ghent game. We might do Ghent in this episode, and then we'll also do Zurich, and then hope that nothing happens in the Zurich game, okay? We're going to come back for Ghent in just a second. Match number two, then, of the episode. It's going to be away from home against Ghent. It is currently something like fourth versus seventh. However, realistically, this is maybe first versus fourth in the grand scheme of things, because that's where we finished last season in the regular league. Let's ignore the fact 
of the championship knockout group thing mess that we always seem to balls up. It's going to be a Costa in goal. The back four remains the same. Luis, Nicolau, Solomon and Gonzalez. Cabral and Patino in the middle, who are the wrong way around. Let's do that very quickly. There we go. Let's see what Cabral can do as that DLP. Montero and Sandino on the wings. Georgiev and Lehman today will be our strikers because if we scroll down, you can see Mohamed Bakayoko is slightly injured. He'll be back in two days' time. It means Justice Abot will be getting himself a uh, squad number today, getting his first appearance on the bench. You will also notice Duvignac is uh, currently not particularly match fit, and that's because he's playing for the under-18s, which might not be a good idea. He is only 16, so it kind of does make sense. Let's carry on from what we did against Zurich. If we can carry on that form, we can basically prove to ourselves and everybody else in the league that we are good enough to win the title. This is what I'm going for. Spending £67 million over the summer is because I want to secure that title as soon as we possibly can. Patino's been flattened. That's going to be a penalty. If it is a penalty, I've got no idea who's going to take this because it's normally Bakayoko. And he isn't playing. My guess is Cabral, maybe, or maybe Patino. What do we got, ref? What have we? It's, it's not a penalty. We're not going to find out. Throw for Ghent, 14 minutes on the clock. Cabral's just gone through the back of Chak Vatadza. Solomon clears it to Montero. He's going to run. Not the best pass from Montero. And now Ghent can come forward with this. Mutsemo runs off to that left-hand side. I think that is uh, Stavros with him. I've forgotten his surname. They've gone for goal. It's a wonderful finish from Fred. It's 1-0 to Ghent. This is not... Why do I always pick these games? Why do I always pick the games where we lose? This is what's going to happen again, isn't it? We're going to play the big boys, the Gents, the Genks, and the Club Bruges, and we're going to lose them. And we are going to finish in the top four and not going to win the league again. Chak Vatadza heads that ball down. Nicolau back to Acosta. Good kick up field from the goalkeeper to find San Nino. He's got some space, plays it to Lehmans. Lehmans' effort goes into the opposite corner and it is 1-1. His fifth goal of the season. He's played three matches. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. That was Route 1 football, wasn't it? It was Acosta to San Nino to Lehmans. Lehmans finishes. We've got ourselves a corner. Gonzalez to Solomon. Solomon can't get on the end of it. I think I need to sort my corners out a little bit because... We seem to have stopped scoring from them. Montero, if this crosses, he shoots. That was a shot. It would have been some goal because it was impossible to score from that angle. Final 10 minutes of the first half. Georgiev has this for us inside our own half. Lehmans can run into some space. He does have the stupid Elio Malarossa haircut. Crosses it in. Doesn't find a white shirt. Instead, Parmentia can now run with this. He's gone over the top. Fred's going to hopefully not get there first. He doesn't. Nicolau intercepts. Now Gonzalez to San Nino. Lehmans is there. It's a terrible pass. Who was that even to? It wasn't even close to any one of our players, was it? Cabral, it's upfield from Solomon. It's not San Nino winning. It's not even San Nino, actually. It was uh, Lehmans. Felipe Francis down the right. He's got Cabral in front of him. Cabral tries to seal it. Can't manage it. Parmentia dinks it over. Mutsemo's there. He's offside. He's offside. We're going to get VAR, but he was offside. Thank you very much, VAR. I didn't need you to know he was offside, but he was definitely offside. It is still 1-1 with a few minutes left to play of the first half. Looking at some players' performances, some people are struggling. San Nino to Lehmans. Almost the same two combining. Instead, I think Lehmans was offside. It's very even. It is a very even game. We've had five shots out of six on target. They've had four out of four on target. It is 1-1. I'm going to give them a little bit of a you've been unlucky We've been doing all right. And then we will say to Montero, we'll also say to Patino, Solomon's not doing so hot either. Also Louise. And I get, to be honest, all of you guys, you guys there and Georgiev, we'll just go, look, lads, uh, I'm not happy. It motivated everybody. What? I did a good, I did a good team talk, everybody. Early chance from this corner. Gonzalez front post is Georgiev. And Lubyen Georgiev makes it 2-1. That is a ridiculously good goal to be scoring. Not good as in quality, but timing. We have started off this second half immediately with a goal. Van den Boer with a goal kick. Ghent have gone three up front now, which might be a worry. Gonzalez, big kick upfield. Lehmans is chasing it down. Felipe Francis back to Van den Boer in goal. Georgiev's there, not going to get it though. It's Richard Gonzalez. Gonzalez is doing a lot at the moment. He's on a 7.1. Cabral does use Richard Gonzalez early crossing. Georgiev's there at the back post. And what a volley that is from Leuben. Georgiev, I, I, I don't know if it's Lubien or Leuben. Leuben? We'll go with Leuben. It's Georgiev anyway, it's 3-1. Georgiev and Lehmans? 
have started to perform together. Is Are we going to have the issue where we're not going to be able to get Bakayoko back into this side? Gonzalez is going down the left again just before the hour mark. Whip it in. Stick on Georgiev's head. It is Georgiev. And Loiben Georgiev makes it 4-1. His third of the game. His third of the season. It's also a perfect hat-trick. 4-1 against Ghent. We were 1-0 down. Is this genuinely going to be our year? I know we've already won the league once. But I think that was other teams not performing. Lehmans is there. Van den Borg can hold on to that one. But yeah, other teams didn't perform as well as, as I kind of expected, I think, that season. This might be the season where we win it on merit. We win it. I want to win it before the league even breaks. That's what I want to happen. Patino to Montero. Right hand side, he's got Luiz. We've seen literally nothing of Luiz. It's a good slide tackle. Guthrie's ma mashed. He's mashed that upfield, apparently. Nicolau, he's just gone straight down the right hand side for Montero again. We've still got 20 minutes to go. Lehmans is going to get this. Lehmans is volleyed or half volleyed effort is blasted past the keeper. It's 5 1. 5-1 against Ghent. This is the type of performance that we have been doing fairly consistently, but not consistently enough. To do this against Ghent, this is big. Also, to do it when you look at some of our key players, the central midfield, both of them on 6.6s. They're not playing well. We're going to do Patino off. Justice Abot is going to come on, get himself a bit of a debut. We're also going to take Solomon off. For Christensen, I know they said Co, but I want to get Christensen some games because he is the younger of the two and I think he's going to be better than Co in the long run. Are we going to have one final highlight? Can we make it six or are Ghent going to pull one back actually from this chance? It's a throw. Who's taking it? Nkunku to Belek. Obot steals that away, but not far enough. Parmentia's there. What a finish that is from Matteo Parmentia. It is 5-2. There is still four and a half minutes of normal time. I don't think it's enough for Ghent to score three. Apparently Cabral was getting blamed for that. He's dropped down to a 6-5. We are going to do our final sub. It's going to be Radakovic coming on as the DLP. Let's just see out the final few minutes without conceding another one. Would be nice. Parmentia with this. Flicks that ball through. Mutsamo's already got one goal to his name. Parmentia to Salah. And Salah's made it 5-3. Is this... This isn't... We're not going to do this, are we? There's five minutes of injury time and the highlight. If this ends up being 5-4, I'm going to be very scared. Montero is going to get on the end of this. We are just entering injury time. Plays a very strange ball. Richard Gonzalez, 8.5 rating for Gonzalez as a left back. Radakovic to Montero. Montero's effort is saved well by Van den Boer. Gonzalez with the corner. This is probably why he's playing quite well, because he's, he's whipping in those corners, isn't he? The ball is cleared. Time is ticking away. It is going to be a 5-3 victory. Certainly... Certainly a game for the neutrals. We've managed to get the three points the last five minutes. Let's pretend that never happened, shall we? Well then, that that was that was intense. 5-3. We are two wins out of two. Top of the table, joint top of the table with OHL and Club Bruges. Everyone else has dropped some points somewhere along the lines. We are now going to go forward a little bit further, but to the other side of the Zurich game just to make sure that we are definitely going through. And then hopefully we're going to find out who we're getting in the next round. Right, we are the other side of the Zurich game. We have drawn 2-2. Solomon and Lehmans with the goals in this one. We win 6-2 on aggregate. And you've probably already seen we're playing Ajax next. Not again. Last season, Ajax knocked us out of this competition. Past meetings, Ajax, we beat them 4-2 at home and lost 4-0 away. Let's not have a repeat of that, shall we? Let's beat Ajax and then... I think we might have one more match to play and then we'll be in the Champions League. Possibly. I'm not 100% sure. We'll find out. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Rupal Boom or Bust. It is season 10. We've started off reasonably well in terms of we haven't lost a game. We have obviously just drawn with Zurich, but we've started off well. 60 odd million pounds spent in transfers. Potentially some more also going to happen in between episodes and maybe even after the Ajax game in the next episode. But if you did enjoy this episode, do please remember to hit the like button. If you're new, please consider subscribing. Stick all your comments down in the comment section below and I'll be back next time with episode 2 of season 10. Thanks for watching.